Welcome to Tai Chi. Everybody ready? Let's warm up. Hands at your waist, turn your neck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten. Stretch your neck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Turn your shoulders. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Lift them up. Eight, nine, ten. Other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Expand your chest. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Waist exercise. One, two, three. Use your waist. Four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Airplane, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Touch toe. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Turn your hips. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Be careful. Shift your weight. Kick your foot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Kick your butt. One. Shift your weight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Turn your knees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Other way. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Heisman, opening up our span, parallel feet. Cross and hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Shift your weight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sit on that side. One, two, three, four, five. Other way. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, good Tai Chi posture. So what is good Tai Chi posture? We know those elements, but here's something to add on. So we know that our feet, our legs, our ankles, our knees, our thighs need to be rooted down. So therefore, they are solid to the ground. When they're solid to the ground, then you make sure that the, each of those areas are stretched out. So you gain some inches, you get a little taller. You feel that you're stretching out all those areas, your ankles, your legs, your knees, your thighs, your hips. The next portion is our waist all the way up to our neck. So how are we stretching out our spine? Stretch out your spine so that you're a little taller. After that, our neck and our head. How can our neck and our head grow a little taller to adhere to this silk silver thread that's dangling our head? So everything is straight up, but don't forget that your shoulders are dropped and you can still get that sensation that you're a little taller and stretched. What about our limbs? What about our arms? Our arms are as if we are wrapping a tree trunk around us. So if we're doing that and our hands are down here, those arms, upper arm, elbow, wrists are also stretched out. And that is good Tai Chi posture. Our chin is slightly down. And if you can recapture how you feel now and walk this way, that would be good practice to say that this posture is the posture that I need to maintain. OK? All right, here we go. Opening up our span a little bit, thinking about how we're going to be a golden cockerel. Shift our weight to the left, up, center, out, counterbalance. Down, center, and up. Down, center, and up. Golden cockerel on its right. Don't forget that pocket that sits to the side, way out to the side to help us with our balance. Last one. Kicking out. Right hand, right foot up and out. Left foot, left hand, up and out. Kick out right. Kick out left. Last one. Holding our ball, rooting down on our right, storing that energy. Look at the size of the ball, look at the parameters. Are you bringing your ball and arms in so that there's more coverage of holding the surface of the ball? Out on an L, move that ball, splice. Part the wild horse's mane. Sit back, sit down, pivot, ball and tee. Move that ball on an L. Turn the back foot, bow stance. Sit back, sit down. Pivot, hold your ball in a T. Move into an L. 
part the wild horse's mane. Sit back, sit down. Pivot, hold your ball in a T. Out on an L, move that ball, adjust the back foot, bow stance. Sit back, sit down. Pivot, ball and T. Move that ball in an L, adjust the back foot, bowl stance. Sit back, sit down. Pivot, T and ball, L and ball. Move that back foot, bowl stance. Okay, your turn to watch. Your turn to watch. Sit back, sit down. Pivot, adjust that ball. Watch my back foot. Out on an L, the back foot adjusts as I come out. Watch that back foot once I get into an L stance. T stance, L stance. Now watch that back foot. It needs to adjust to a 45 degree angle. Watch again. Watch one more time and then you're gonna do it with me, okay, with that adjustment. Here we go. Out on an L, move that ball, adjust the foot as you come out to part the wild horse's mane. Sit back, sit down, pivot, ball and T. L, move that ball, adjust the back foot as you part the wild horse's mane. Sit back, sit down, pivot, hold your ball in the T. Out on an L, move that ball, adjust the back foot as you move into a bowl stance. Sit back, sit down, pivot, hold your ball in a T. Out on an L, move that ball, adjust the back foot, part the wild horse's mane. This time I'm gonna watch you sit back, sit down, pivot, hold your ball in the T, out on an L, move that ball, adjust the back foot, part the wild versus me. Sit back, sit down, pivot, hold your ball in the T, out on an L, move that ball, adjust the back foot, part the wild versus me. Sit back, sit down, pivot, hold your ball in the T, out on an L, move that ball, adjust the back foot, part the wild horse's mane. Last one, sit back, sit down. Pivot, hold your ball in a T. Out on an L, adjust the back foot, part the wild horse's mane. Sit back, sit down, hold your ball and give me a good ball. How do you hold your ball? And everybody can learn, when you come out on an L, don't forget now, it's on your heel. I think you have made the adjustment so the adjustment is, one, the ball comes in, the ball comes in, two, before this foot, before this L foot can come down, it starts to move the back foot to a 45 degree, and it comes down together. Can we go over that? On a T, on an L, only your heel. Weight is where? On the right. The energy has to come around, and as it comes around, the back foot makes the adjustment, and then it comes down. The other side now, okay? Sit back, sit down, pivot, weight it down on the left foot. Here's your T. We're going into an L. We go slowly. Out on an L, move the back foot to a 45 degree, and place it down at the same time. Your front foot comes down, the back foot has gone into a 45 degree angle. Sit back, sit down, pivot, hold your ball on a T, out on an L, move that ball, adjust the back foot, bow stance. Sit back, sit down, pivot. Right hand on the bottom, left hand on the top to hold your good ball in the middle of your body, which is facing the bulletin, ball, a bulletin board wall, not to this side, but 
right centered in your middle of your body that's facing the wall on the bulletin board side. Out on an L, move that ball, adjust the back foot, flatten down the front foot, bow stance. Sit back, sit down, pivot, ball and T. Last set. Out on an L, move that ball, adjust the back foot, part the wall versus me. Sit back, sit down, pivot, ball and T, facing that wall. Out on an L, move that ball, part the wild horse's mane. Okay, good, good. Sit back, sit down, twist step, ball and T. So this is what we don't want to do. Don't want to do, and I don't want to do it too many times. If we're on a T and we're on an L, I don't want to put this forward foot down while the weight is still on the back. I don't want to come down and then move this foot. So what do I want? I want it on an L, move the energy, flatten down on that 45 degree on this flat foot. I want it done simultaneously. The reason is, if you should continue to do it incorrectly, you're going to hurt this knee. You don't want to come down and still have 50-50 or 60-40 or whatever. You want to move that energy and then come down together. So how do you move and pivot on this foot? You do not have to lift anything other than the weight. You don't have to be on your heel. You don't have to be on your toes. All you have to is alleviate some of this weight and whatever it takes to pivot. So my foot moved and pivoted, but did not show you by lifting off the ground. Of course, I have different kinds of shoes than most of you, but whatever it takes to move that back foot in a gentle way is what I'm striving for you to do, okay? And this is important, and um, I don't want to keep on um, you know, drilling it. I think that I want to explain it, and then I want to move on, okay? All right. And from what I could see, you are making that adjustment. So good, continue in on it, but just don't flatten this foot before you make this adjustment. All right, let's go through the whole 10 now, and then we'll go back to um, the, the new lesson, which is grasping the bird's tail and then reviewing cloud hands, all right? Good Tai Chi posture, remember how to grow taller. How do you grow taller? Bring in your feet this time, okay? Grow taller. First, your ankles, your legs, your knees, your thighs, your hips. Make that spine straight. Drop those shoulders. Grow into your neck, your head. Dip your chin down, tongue on your palate. Commencing form. Slowly drain the weight off of your left as your heel comes up. On your toe, balance, open, toe. Arch, heel, hands rotate. Wear your mittens as you elevate both hands. Shoulder level, push down, flex your knees. Left hand centered, right hand higher, open. Bring the back hand to your ear as you glance and turn your face. The pulse of the monkey. Center. Left hand higher, glance to your ear, turn your face, meet both hands, slide forward, slide back. T stands parallel and higher. Ear, hand, heel, turn the hips and waist as you brush your knee. Sit back, sit down, pivot, parallel higher on a T. Out with your heel, turn the hips and waist as you brush your knee, too. Sit back, sit down, pivot, hold your ball on a T stance. You're gonna part the wild horse's mane. Out on an L, move that ball, adjust the back foot, 
low stance. Sit back, sit down, pivot, hold your ball on a T stance, move that ball in an L, adjust the back foot, part the wild horse's mane. Flip that hand and join it. Sit back, twist step. This is stem and cup at 12 o'clock. Pivot out on your left heel. Re go out to the nine o'clock. Flip the hands, close your feet. 12 o'clock, cup and stem. One, two, three o'clock. Flip the hands and open your stance. 12 o'clock, cup and stem. Nine o'clock, only flip your hands and meet. 12 o'clock, cup. One, two, three o'clock, flip your hands, close your stance. Middle or cup, flip your hands open. Middle or cup, one, two, three o'clock, only flip your hands and meet. Shift your weight to the left, up, golden cockerel. Down, up, golden cockerel. Down, right hand, right foot up, and out. And in, and down, and up, and out. Holding our ball on the T stance, we're going to the right. So the right hand's on the bottom, the right foot is insubstantial. Move that ball in an L. Use your forearm of your right hand to push your opponent away. But yet, flip the bird's tail and pull him back. Pull it down and look back. And turn and then contact and push out. And separate at shoulder and roll back. And forward. Sit back, twist step. Hold your ball on a T stance. We're going to ward off our opponent using our left forearm. Out on an L, forearm him out, but yet get the bird's tail and grasp it and pull it down and pull it back and look back at it. Then turn, then square, then contact. Push at your wrist to separate shoulder width away to roll back to roll up and forward. Next week's lesson, sit back, twist step, turn. Open step, open. In step, in. Tuck that right hand inside of your cross as you embrace your tiger, pulling him up, rotating on your wrist to push out. Separate shoulder width, drop your shoulders, make yourself small as you flex your knees. Up on your heel, off the ground, closing form. Okay, so that you can see that uh, we're almost near the end. And if this is our, what did I say, uh, fifth class, sixth class, we have um, more opportunities to refine and review. So let's start with the harder movement. Let's start with the, uh, it's not really the harder movement, but uh, grasping of the bird's tail. Grasping of the bird's tail, you recall, is this one where you pull down the bird's tail, you look back and then you throw your opponent back out. But the grasping of the bird's tail is inclusive in that it contains two sub-movements, one of which is grasping and the other one is first warding off your opponent. So first we ward off our opponent and then we actually drag down our opponent. But to say it in a nice way, we grasp the bird's tail, okay? So watch first. So we're on a T stance, so we're holding our ball. And for this particular movement, we're not going left, we're going right, so we can end nicely. But for me, now I'm going forward for you to watch, okay? So we have our ball, we come out on an L. What did we say? We're gonna use our forearm to push our opponent away. The bottom hand always advances not the top hand. Left foot, left hand. I move into an L, I make the adjustment on my back foot, and I ward off. I push my opponent away. He's right in front of me, not to the side, not to the side, and not any place else. 
He is right here. So you push him away using your forearm. You push him away. And then what do you do? You advance the hand that you pushed him away. You flip it. You flip it. You join it. And you bring him down. You bring him down by sitting back on your back foot. Therefore, there should be very little weight on your front foot. If the weight is on the back foot, the weight is here. So you're using your body force to drag him down. And then you're going to contact before you put your foot down and push. Come back down, making yourself small, and then pushing him yet another time. Okay, want to try that? All right, we're going right now, okay? So right foot is insubstantial or weightless. Right hand holds the bottom of our ball. Right left hand on the top. We're centered towards this wall, not that wall or not that angle. All right, we're on a T stance. We're taking an L stance and we're moving that ball. We're adjusting the back foot and we're warding off using our right hand to push him away. We flip that right hand and we join it. Staggered. And what do we do? Drag him down as we sit back on our back foot. We look back. We turn, we square, then we contact at our wrist and push him away, flattening out the front foot, rolling back, rolling forward. What we do on one side, we must do on the other side. Sit back, twist step, bulletin board wall, hold your ball in the middle of your body on a T-stance out on an L, move that ball, adjust the back foot, ward him off with your left hand or left forearm. But flip that hand and join it and grasp the bird's tail as you pull down, sit back, look back, turn, square, then contact and push him out, flatten that front foot, separate and roll back and roll forward. Let's do a drill. Sit back, twist step, ball and T. You know what wall I want you to be looking at and squaring to. Out on an L, move that ball, adjust the back foot, ward him off, push him away. But flip that hand and join it with the other hand to sit back, sit down as you grasp the bird scale. Turn, square, contact. Push out, flatten front foot, separate shoulder width. Drop your shoulders, make yourself small, and push him out yet another time. Sit back, twist step. Where do I want your ball centered? Move to an L, move that ball, ward off on the other hand, forearm on the left but flip it and join it and grasp the bird's tail. As you look back, turn, then square, then contact, push, flatten, separate, roll back, roll forward. One more set. Sit back, twist step, ball and T. Out on an L, move that ball, Adjust the back foot as you forearm a moment away. Flip that hand and grasp the bird's tail. Very good. Turn, square, then contact. Push at your wrist. Separate shoulder width and roll back. And forward. Sit back, twist step. Hold your ball correctly, middle of your body. L stance, move that ball, forearm arm on the left, and flip that hand and join and pull him down, pull him back and look back. 
Turn, then square, contact, push, separate, roll back, roll forward. Next week's lesson for those who want the challenge. Sit back, twist and turn, open and open, in and in, off the ground, right hand on the inside of the cross as you embrace the tiger, pulling him up, rotating on your wrist to push out. Separate both hands, drop your shoulders, make yourself small as you close your form. Okay? How was that? Any questions on how to do it? I think when you see the video and you hear the voice, and it'll all come back to you. Stand up, give it a try. Those of you whose memory is short like mine, go, go home quickly, get on the ground, and practice it before you lose it, okay? And it can be done. Uh, it is actually uh, very similar to brush knee and parting of the wild horse's mane, except for the hand position. You know that we are on a T stance, we're on an L stance, and something happens, and we repeat that. It's not like cloud hands, where it's a sideways motion. And I know that cloud hands, for some of you, still needs a review, so I want to spend some time working on cloud hands. First, watching me. So in all instances, we are looking at the 12 o'clock stem and cup. We are looking at the extremity of your uh, three o'clock, all right? Something happens at three o'clock, something happens at 12 o'clock, something happens at three o'clock. This is your three o'clock. This is your 12 o'clock, but what happens? At nine o'clock, the bottom hand joins and flips and the, the um, foot opens. 12 o'clock is home base, 50% evenly distributed, and my stem and my cup, two inches below my navel, pointing at the number 12. What happens as I move on? I can't stay there. My body wants to move this way. Therefore, I shift my weight, and I join it when I flip and join. Three things happen. I'm at home base, 50-50. But what happens when I go to the extremity? I need to open the most logical thing, stem and cup. What happens if I want to go the other way? No different. I keep my position on my feet. I flip and I join. I come back to 12 o'clock, home base. I want to get out there. How do I get out there? Just move my hands? No. Tai Chi is not just hands. I use my feet and my body. I use my hips and my waist to reach out or get to the extremities. And what am I doing with my hands? I'm, am I drawing a rectangle? I'm not drawing a rectangle. I'm drawing an ellipse, it's rounded at the edges. And how do I do that? I cup my hand. I cup my hand and make those corners. When I want to get out, I just move, move the hands, but come out at 12 o'clock to be a golden copper. Okay? So the body position and shifting of weight lends itself to a good transition out of cloud hands. And I could blanket that and say that the body and the mind helps all of our Tai Chi movements once we make the connections that our whole body needs to be in play, okay? But as we are learning, hopefully you can make some small connections to see the bigger picture or connect the bigger picture. All right, let's start with grasping of the, uh, parting of the wild horse's mane to get into plow hands, okay? So we are here and we're gonna part the wild horse's mane, part the wild horse's mane, get into cloud hands, okay? On a T stance, holding our ball, right hand on the top, left hand on the bottom. 
out on an L, move the hands, adjust the back foot, part the wild horse's knee. Here it is. Sit back, sit down. Pivot. Hold your ball centered in your body, middle of your body. Out on an L, move that ball, adjust the back foot, part the wild horse's mane. Flip the forward hand, join it with the other hand. Sit back, twist step, move the hand to the 12 o'clock position. So you should have stem and cup. Pivot on the heel of your left foot as you move into the nine o'clock position to flip the hand and close your feet. 12 o'clock, home base, middle or cup. Stem and cup. Flip the hands, open. Home base, 50-50. 11, 10, nine o'clock. What do I do? Flip meat only. 12 o'clock, cup. One, two, three o'clock. Flip the hands, close the feet. Middle or cup. 11, 10, 9. Flip and open feet. 12 o'clock, middle cup. We're going to get out so we don't need to move our feet. Only flip and meet at 3 o'clock. Come back to the 12 o'clock. Shift your weight, which should be shifted for us, to our left to be a golden cockle. Down, up golden cockerel, right. Down, right hand, right foot up, kicking out. Left hand, left foot up, and out. Now we're getting into grasping of the bird's tail, going to the right. Right hand on the bottom, right foot insubstantial, ready to go. How do we grasp the bird's tail? First, we need to ward off. Out on an L, move that hand and ball. Adjust the back foot, use your forearm to push your opponent away. But flip that hand and join it as if you were grasping the bird's tail. As you look back, sit back. Turn, then square contact at your wrist to push out, flatten the front foot, separate. Roll back and roll forward. Sit back, twist step. Hold your ball, middle of your body on a T. We're going to ward off. Out on an L, move that ball. Just the back foot, push him away. But yet, flip that hand to grasp the bird's tail. As you sit down, sit back, look back. Turn, then square, contact at your wrist. Push out with that force, flatten your feet. Separate, roll back and roll forward. Sit back, twist, turn. Open, open. In, in. Off the ground, right hand tucked inside of the cross. Bring your tiger up. Rotate at your wrist so both palms are facing you. Push out with the energy of the left hand. Palms are down. Drop your shoulders. Make yourself small as you close your form. Okay? Um, that wasn't so bad. I think that when you first came to Tai Chi, you thought you'd never be able to do this. And for those of you who have been here many more times, I think you find that there's always room for improvement, and that's what makes it nice. Um, uh, I just want to call one thing, one element that you can work on as you're practicing. Oftentimes you hear me say, wear your mittens. So show me how you wear your mittens. How do you wear your mittens? The fingers come in as if to touch, but not squeezed in. These are your mittens. So whenever you do Tai Chi, wear those mittens as opposed to wearing your gloves, where you're separated. And once you find that you're aware of it, it'll come automatically. But if you don't call yourself to that attention, it'll just continue to be how you want it to be, which is usually open. But it's something that some of you are already um, 
doing or want to do to make your Tai Chi a little bit more refined. Okay? It's not wrong, but it's more correct if you wear your mittens. I just want to talk a little bit about some basic body movements in Tai Chi. Tai Chi is trying to maintain good balance. Good balance requires staying centered, okay? So we talk about core muscles. We're really talking about muscles of, some people call it the soma, the central part of your body, not your extremities. The legs beyond the knees, not core, okay? Above the knees, big muscles here, hip muscles, back muscles, shoulder muscles, all core muscles. And you try to incorporate that. So when you're doing, say, I'll just give grasping the bird's tail. When you're moving your hand movements, your, your hand movements are just uh, the finishing touches, but they seem to get more of people's attention as to putting their hands out and, and the motions. And that is part of the, the whole movement, but it is not or it is something which may, in my mind, sometimes uh, absorb most of your attention, or your attention, whereas the essence of Tai Chi to some degree is movement of the body. For instance, grasping of the bird's tail. You're here and you're going to ward off. You step out, turn, and your ward off is not out here. You're not just using your hand. Your ward off is here, turn, turn here, and where am I at? My hands have come here, where is my body? My body is here. But eventually what I want to do is push the man away or the person away. You see, my body is doing the work. But the tendency is for people to be out here somewhere because somebody said, use your hands, truly. Use your hands, but remember the core muscles are where it's at. Because if you're out this way and you go out too far, what happens? Out of balance. You haven't taken care of your core. You followed your hand. Similarly here, you followed your hand. Where are you at? Okay, you don't want to be there. And in doing so, you've done something which you uh, are not taking advantage of, of some mobility of your body, which you should be doing. If you do it properly, here, and I sit, we don't do enough of this. So what happens is, the ultimate thing that happens is, you don't bend it, you don't bend this, you don't, you, you don't keep centered, so what you want to do is here. You don't want to do this because then it's bending your knee. You want to tilt your pelvis a little bit. Okay, so we, we do that. And then the next movement is to come out. And then you come down. And what am I doing? Like Lucila said, we use our body. The hands are just the accessory. They happen to be the toe lines on which we're going to pull. But we don't pull with the cable when you have a tow truck, the old style tow truck. You don't pull with the cable, right? You pull with the truck. So this is the truck, and the cable is just this. You're sitting back. What's happened to my hip? My hip is bent. What happens to Tai Chi posture? Still here, back down to my tailbone, it's still relatively upright. But if you if you come back this way and you're this way, Tai Chi posture, you're out this way. You're out of alignment. So when you're coming back, you're sitting down. And that's what she's saying when you sit down. But a lot of people do not use their pelvis when they sit down or when they come forward. So go home and practice. Sitting back and, 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 and saying, think about head, back, 
but straight for what has made a difference. You use your hips. You want to use, we use our knees, we use our ankles, but sometimes we forget about our hips. And the hips have very strong core muscles. One more just thing about Tai Chi. Uh, hand movements now, or, or extremity movements, particularly the, 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 the upper extremities. Joints are never, and even in the legs, joints are never fully extended. That's just a martial arts principle. You do that, you see, the, you, you leave yourself open to a joint which is rigid. And somebody who is trying to do some harm with you would just love that. Because you have, the only way you can come back out is this way. But that, in that split second, your arm is going to be turned the other way because your opponent is going to try to take advantage of it. But also, when you're out here, what muscles are engaged? Muscles here of this joint, muscles of this joint. Once you're out this way, the muscles are all, they've shot their wad, they're, they're, they're just strung out on a string somewhere because the bones have taken over and taken rigidity. So part of the, the, the exercise is push open, but not out this way. It's, it's push here, open, come down, okay? Very good. Um, I just want to take, a, a take off on that. If we're parting the wild horse's mane, and I set my hand out like this, the rest of my hands don't move, but they move along because my body is making it move. When I'm like this, and I set my hand this way, I have no choice but the hands will move because I'm moving towards my forward and, and moving towards my back. So to understand that, what I just did, would not make sense if it was like this. My body did not help my hands. My hands did all the work. Watch again. I'm still this way, but if I move, what happens? The total body, the core is in play. So to see it in a simple way, it's a pattern that can be used in all of Tai Chi. So in grasping of the bird's tail, already I'm making my body move. I'm not just leaving it here, then making my hands move by itself. But to be go, go beyond that, once my force and my energy on my back foot wants to push that guy away, my opponent away, the energy has to be then accumulated and pushed out through my core to come out this way. If I did not believe it and I was not correctly doing Tai Chi, I would be doing this. All hands. My body did not help me. I'm still in the wrong alignment. I need to move in the correct alignment. And once I moved my body, my hand went for the ride. I didn't just flip that hand up. Watch again. Out. Body moves that hand. What do I do with my body? I turn and my hand went for the ride. My body helped me to turn. Whereas, if my body did not help me to turn on that particular movement, I would just do this. I neglected to turn. Easy said, easy said, easy to watch, but then if you understand that portion, then your mind is still active, stimulated, and good, then teach your body. Okay? So we're on our journey. I think there's lots of, um, little itty bitty things that amount to a lot that are very important. So stay with us and together we can improve.
Okay, good job. See you next time. <laughs> Money. Money. Hello. Hi. Hello. Uh -huh. Oh. No. Stay back. Stay close. Stay close.
Hello. Oh, good morning. 